Hey guys, I wanted to show you uh, what I was doing outside this weekend because as you saw in the one video update from the, the other day, we had snow. But this week we're supposed to have some, about four days up in the 50s and then Saturday coming weekend, we may even actually get up to 60. So that means it's time to start planting some of the really early plants like the uh, peas. So let me show you where I put those. And if you guys have been watching my channel, you know where I usually put my peas in the yard. For anybody that's new, I went ahead and planted my uh, Cascadia snow peas, as well as my SS141, you know, snap peas. In these areas here, like that one over there where that trellis is. This one here, and the trellis over there. And then I've got the, the little hutch, bean hutch trellises over here, so I've got that one there that I planted with peas, that one over there, and then here, this is where I used to have the overhead, uh, I guess I don't know what you call that, a pergola kind of thing that I had made with that reused, you know, garbage fencing that a neighbor was throwing away. So I made that, I took my bamboo from our bamboo that we grow here on our property, up in that area there, I made that nice little uh, cross bracing behind the fence. And now I'm going to use this to grow peas right here. I put some cover crop out here. This is all uh, white Dutch clover, so it's a smaller growing clover. And then I have the peas planted along there. And so they're going to grow up on that and use that as their trellis. And I've also put peas out here where we do our cucumbers. I've added some uh, clover cover crop into these new garden boxes here in the yard. And that's going to be planted with squash and some of our tomatoes. And then over here, I kind of scraped a hole through my, uh, you can still see these are the beans from last summer. I just leave those in there, let those rot and break down for feeding the microorganisms in the soil. And so this is going to be snap peas as well as over here. That's kind of what we started already for our uh, 2019 gardening. And then I threw a bunch of cover crop out over on the... Uh, the hillsides over there, it's just, it's just that white Dutch clover. I like to throw a, a good cover crop down in all these kind of areas just to give a little nutrient boost. Even if it doesn't fully grow into big full-size clover, it does put a little bit of nutrient into the soil, a little nitrogen boost, and a little soil remediation. And then I've got the clover here in the yard. I reseed this, and I threw a little bit more clover out here because we had that nice cold spell where we had the snow, as you saw in one of the other videos this week so uh, I don't know if any of that was ruined by having that but we're gonna have some nice warm weather this week so I thought it'd be a good chance to throw down some more cover crop and get that in this yard because uh, if we don't this becomes a nice muddy mess and the dogs run through but this year I'm gonna be reseeding this with some longer type grasses that we have like you know natively that have popped up I'm gonna seed some more grass in here so this is gonna be a grass and clover patch That'll look really nice. And I want to have the grass in here because the clover does die down pretty bad. And then we get these bare spots over the winter. And it becomes a, you know, a messy, uh, <laughs> a messy area that uh, our little dogs, so we have three pugs. We have Gus, which is our older pug. And he's going to be 15 this year. And then uh, we have two younger ones, Edgar and Benny. And Benny's the black pug. And then the fawn pug is Edgar. Well, they like to... <laughs> I guess you say rough house with the older pug. So they'll take him and as he's coming back down from the hillside going to the bathroom, they'll jump on top of him and shove him down in the mud. <laughs> he gets covered with mud. <laughs> and Paula gets usually really mad <laughs> when he comes walking in the house and he's got mud all over his sides because she has to give him a bath or I have to give him a bath and, and then he tracks it through the house before we notice it. And sometimes he's, you know, <laughs> rolled around on the rug or gotten in their dog bed that way. But that's just kind of the funny things I have in a little urban homestead here. It's not perfect, and sometimes it gets messy. But overall, when the summertime comes, I love this yard. I love all the stuff that I've got growing, and we've got a lot of new stuff that's going to be coming on because we do have the, uh, the little grafted pear tree here that I did this last winter that should be starting to bloom, you know, in the next month or so and see if actually any of those grafts took. And then we've also got the, uh, the pears, the Asian pear seeds, that I uh, stratified and grew uh, two years ago were big enough to go in the ground so I took a bunch of those I took five of those and I took them and put them up in that hillside way up there so we've got five new pear trees that'll be coming up up there and that'll be fun to watch along with the fig tree that got planted up there this year 
and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. The garden boxes are still pretty sleepy. I threw some cover crop inside that garden, those two garden boxes up there to get those going because they do get some good afternoon sun at this time of year. Because uh, over there, I mean, with the daylight savings now, at, you know, four o'clock, or it's almost gonna be five, they said, with the change. But uh, we get some sun all the way up until about three o'clock through the, that break of the trees up there. And so hopefully that'll start getting that cover crop going over there. And then I'll wait another few weeks to a month, you know, maybe maybe the end of this month, I'll actually go and I'll I'll break down the rest of the uh, the garden refuse from last year in those boxes and chop everything off. And I'll throw some cover crop in there, let that grow for another month. And then we'll uh, cover that all with the black plastic this year. Because last year I used the clear plastic and it didn't seem to kill off the cover crop as well as I wanted. So this year I'm gonna do a black plastic over that. And that way it'll deprive it of light and it will heat it up and it will cause that cover crop to just chop and drop basically into those beds and we'll be ready for planting for spring. All right, well this has been Brian from PMB Homesteading. Give you a little tour of the, uh, the backyard here on the uh, urban homestead. All right, talk to you again, bye.